Having looked at t-tests, we're going to look at ANOVAs now, which are very similar in that they both compare means across groups, but in the case of ANOVA, it's across more than two groups. Why do we do ANOVAs? We do it for the same reason as a t-test, because we have more group, but we have more groups to compare it amongst. So naturally, we don't want too many groups, though, because our results will be unusable. So the idea is we want to actually statistically test if the mean scores of three or more groups are statistically different from each other. So we run them in a very similar way. We do this by going analyze, compare means, one way and over. Allow me to resize. Now, as mentioned briefly with the t-tests, different people do run these tests differently. I do mine in what I think is the best way, following Andy Field's way, uh, as outlined in his 2009 book. And I would recommend you to follow the same. Um, and perhaps not get too caught up in seeing how other people do it for the nature of the assessment, because it will be quite confusing. And I do assure you that his process is, is quite rigorous and based upon some, some very strong reasoning. So first, first and foremost, we're going to have to select the variable we want to analyze. Let's do purchase history again. Now, looking at the groups in which we're going to compare this purchase history across, we'll use the age group variable that we previously created. So now we're comparing purchase history means across the three age groups to determine if they're statistically different. So we want age, where's our previous age group, age ordinal. And that goes into the factor box. Now, in these other windows, we don't need to do anything for contrasts. Uh, for, bear with me for a sec. For post hoc, we will do Tucky and Reg Q, R H E W Q, and Tucky. And options, we'll select descriptives, homogeneity, Brown, Forsyth, and Welch. Again, this is advised by Andy Field in his 2009 book. What we will find is that in these options, this is more the output it shows us, but those post hocs will actually change the potential output to a degree. So it is important we follow it in that way. We then click continue and run it. Now descriptives give us those basic descriptives like frequency. So it'll tell us the three groups, group one, two, and three, as we can see at the top. Uh, oops, sorry, no, we don't have the, the name of the group because it's our grouping variable, not the variable name. But we can see how many people belong in each group, the mean for each group, and then obviously a whole bunch of other information. Now, what we can see is that on face value, and these are the three figures we would use if we're creating a graph. On face value, definitely the mean for group one is the largest, but is it substantially different from the others? On face value, perhaps not. Um, however, we do need to look deeper in that in a statistical sense to determine that. So looking at the ANOVA table, we're provided with a significance test, an F score and a significance test um, associated with all three of the groups together. So what we can see here is that because this figure is smaller is not smaller than 0.05, it's 0.420. Uh, in this case, there is no statistically significant difference between them. However, that views them overall um, amongst all three rather than individual comparisons. So we can say that no, they're not different statistically um, across all three. But if we want to look at individual groups, as in group one versus group two, group one versus group three, we come to our multiple comparisons table. And looking at what we have here, we can see group one versus group two, group one versus group three. Um, and all we're looking at is the mean difference here, which is basically the difference between them. If we calculate uh, A minus B, what we can see is 0.376, or if we do it the other way, group two and group one, we have B minus A. Um, so that just tells us the difference in the mean, which we could have calculated from up here. Uh, there could be some rounding differences. And what we're looking for is the significance that goes with that mean difference. So this is basically like running a whole bunch of t-tests. So a t-test between this, t-test between one and three, two and three as well. Um, and what we can see is that again, all of these are non-significant, which tells us that individually, the comparisons between group one and group two are not, and one and three and two and three are not significantly different either. Or in other words, whilst the means are somewhat different on face value, statistically, there is the same purchase history amongst these three age groups. In other words, you perhaps don't really want to identify one of them um, as being a key driver of sales because statistically they are all the same. Um, what that value is being around 20 to 21 to 22, um, obviously that's important, but statistically they are the same. Um, and again, it's about that idea that statistical, if it's non-significant as we're seeing here, 
it's not a bad thing, it just means that there is no difference between those two groups. So keep that in mind when it comes to interpreting our results. Um, and these are the figures we'll be presenting with the, the significance associated with them and the F test and its significance merely as footnotes in this case. So now that we've done the last analysis required for the assessment um, in terms of the types of tests, we're going to now look at taking some of these results very briefly and putting them into Excel and creating some graphs and tables.